Um, this is uh, Vanessa Howie. In this video, and I am a personal trainer. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, I will try to put my credentials in the description as well as the exercises that I plan on doing. Um, today I'm going to try to go through a few tricep exercises and the only reason I have a few on here are some of the total body videos that I've done previous have more tricep exercises in those. Uh, and some of the chest exercises that I have done in previous videos, the assisting muscles are triceps and I mentioned that in those videos. So that's why there's, there's only like two exercises on here and that's because um, in some of the other total body videos I have gone over several other tricep exercises in those videos and I did not want to repeat uh, all the tricep exercises all over again. You may refer, look at those videos if you want to uh, see what exercises I have. And I will try to, to uh, type, post on there the exercises that I did in those videos. I think I have a log of it. I just need to update it, type it up, and then uh, put it in there. So if I did not do it, I'm sorry. I had a lot to do. I'm trying to get through triceps, shoulders, and what's the last one on here? Back. If I do not get a chance to go th to get through all three, then uh, I can make another short video and then possibly tack it on to the end. So, anyway, I have just under 30 minutes to get this done. I spent like a minute explaining, so maybe 29 minutes right now. The first exercise: standing. Oh, standing tricep kickback with a band. Now, I'm going to use this medium band here. It's from ProSource. I'm not promoting the product, I'm just letting you know what I am using. The, the band is hitting the tripod. This is the resistance, around 8 to 12 pounds. That I'll be using. Now, for the kickbacks, I'm gonna, if you place one foot in, it's not as difficult. If you place two feet in, like this, try to put them as close together as you possibly can, okay? I'm gonna try a two foot. Hinging from your hips, notice that this is slacked. Pull it up, palms are gonna face away behind you. Push back. This is a tricep kickback with the band. Now, if this feels awkward because it might be hitting your hip, you can adjust the handle like this. Some of them you can, uh, and some of them you can't. And then you can wrap your hands around the, the entirety of the handle and then push back that way. Some people find that's more comfortable than having the handles graze your hip. Keep your core in tight when you do that. I'm going to release that. For those that find two feet difficult, do one foot, okay? But you can do the same pivoting process of adjusting the handle and doing that with, with one foot as you did with two. French press. I am not gonna do French press with the tubing because there was a tubing video that I did and I demonstrated that in that tubing video. You may refer to that tube, that video tubing if you want to know more information about that. Up, there we go. Doing a French press. I will do it seated and standing. And in fact, let me readjust that camera. There we go. Okay. So the seated French press, I'll show a front and side view. I need to, need to bring the step out a little bit if I'm going to do a front view because I have a feeling that if I go back I'm going to hit the TV. So, front view. Now, I'm going to lighten up my weights just a little bit because I am going to be doing several upper body exercises and it does take some energy to verbally coach. So, that's the only reason I'm lightening it up. It's not because I can't handle it. If I were doing this on my own, 
I would stick with these or something a little heavier. I have a tendency to cross my weights simply because it's a lot easier to handle it if it's one mass than if it's two independent weights doing what they do. Bringing it to the chest, pushing it up overhead, pinning the elbows in close to the head, allowing the elbows to drop down below the level of your head. Now, for girls, you're gonna, you may have a the little exercise bun in the back, and I'm about to turn around and show you. So, see that little exercise, the little bun I have in the back? Girls, if you don't want that to be hit every time, tilt your chin down towards your chest, and there you go. Keeping the elbows pinned in. Now, for those that can do this standing, and bring it into the chest, push it up overhead, pin the elbows in, and I'm only showing a side view of this, because if you see the front view, it looks the same as when I'm seated. But on this, on the standing one, you really have to focus on pulling that core in. That's why I showed you both seated and standing is you really have to focus on pulling that core in. And for those that want uh, to hit multiple areas, even though one is primarily focused, the secondary one is a good one to, to, to pick. Okay, now, <clears throat> moving on the shoulders. I'm gonna lighten up my weight for the front raises here. I'll keep the five tandem because overhead presses are after that. I'm going to lighten up to threes. And I'll show you front and side view. When you're doing these seated, you want to scoot to the end edge of the bench. Reason being, if you start here, you're not going to be able to start at the hip. And I want you to try to start at the hip. Palms facing Actually, palms are facing your body on this one, so it's a front raise. Raise the dumbbells up to your shoulders. Well, shoulder height, not to the shoulder, shoulder height. So if you have it up here, it's hitting this muscle right there. It's not hitting the shoulder anymore. So you bring it up, hitting this front part of the shoulder up to there. So I'll show a side view. And if you're on a bench that has uh, it, when you're sitting on it, there is room to move, like you see my hands moving here, then you don't have to sit on the edge like this. You can scoot yourself back and do this motion here. This is fine. For those that are not quite strong enough, you do not have to go all the way up. You don't have to come all the way up here. You can come down here. That's okay too. As long as you're feeling it, in the front part of the shoulder. That's fine. The same motion standing applies. You start at your hips and have the dumbbells have the dumbbells come up, up to shoulder height. The only difference is you might need to you're going to need to activate your core to keep yourself stabilized. That's the only difference. Overhead press. I'll trade out. Use fives instead of threes. Ordinarily, I would use sevens, which are on the floor, but I am coaching on this one, and so it takes some energy for me to coach, so I have to lighten up the weight. Your dumbbells are going to start at your ears. I'm going to have a split stance with my feet. So when I do this, I notice that I still have a little bit of whipping motion because I'm pushing into my feet. If I do this, I can't push in, even if I try to push into my feet, it's not going to rock me backwards. It's not going to allow that. Not nearly as much. Dumbbells start at the ears. Push straight up overhead. Now, this will get more of the front of the shoulder. If you want to get more of the medial part of the shoulder, start here, palms facing forward, and overhead press. Now, whether it's here or here, you can do either exercise standing as well. So whether you're seated and doing an overhead press or you're standing and doing an overhead press. When you're standing, any exercise that you do standing, engage the core. Tighten it. 
really focused on tightening it up. Bent over, lateral raise. I'm going to switch dumbbells again because this is going to be working the area around your shoulder blades. Now, there was one video where I was showing uh, one of the um, anatomy charts that we have that I have down here. <coughs> The area that we are trying to focus on is, and I'm going to try to do this with the end of the dumbbell. This area right in here, or in that scapula area, all along that band at the top, from up here all the way across to the other side, that's the area that we are trying to focus on. Now, I'm going to show both front and side views because it is a bent over lateral raise. I'm going to show the front view so that you can see how far you need to be hinged over and the arms coming out the side, how high they should go. I'll also show a side view, but I will just do it on this arm because this arm is not going to be able to come out as far. Or I could scoot forward and do it that way, but I think it would still hit. So, and I'm going to be scooting to the edge because my arms will come down here at the side. And if I'm not sitting on the edge or on the corner like this, which a lot of people have a tendency to do. In fact, I think I'll just do this on the corner instead of going front and side. Dumbbells in the hands. Palms are going to face each other. Hinge from the hips. If you have girth here, then what you do is you open up your knees and allow that girth to rest. And you just allow your hands to relax. And this it will literally give your arms a stopping point. So right there where it touches your thighs, you pause there and then you come back up. I'm going to do this, my legs slightly closer together, and I'm not going to collapse forward like this. I'm going to hinge forward until my belly says, okay, can't go anymore. You only go up, the highest that you can ever go up is shoulder height. Don't ever come up like this. That activates this up here. You don't want that. And if you find yourself with weights and you're doing this motion here, you're jutting forward with your neck, then the weights are too heavy. Lighten them up. Okay? That's what you do. Arnold press. I'll use the five pounds. You can do this standing. Uh, I find that if I do a seated, I can focus much more on doing the exercise first. Once I have the range of motion down, then once I have the range of motion down, I stand up and then I can activate the core in addition to using the arms and the biceps. Arnold curl. Start here in this bicep curl position at the end of the move, at the end of the bicep curl move, uh, palms facing the body, rotate the palms facing the room and then press overhead. I'm still keeping my core in to make sure that none of this rocking motion happens, okay? This is working biceps, but it is working more of the shoulder and less of the bicep because you're starting in that, con in that contracted position and then pushing overhead. Halo. Okay, I will have a single five pound dumbbell for this one. I'm fairly certain that I can do it with it. With it. Now, I'll start facing the camera and then I want to turn to a side view so that you can see all around, okay? So, start with the weight up here in front of your face. You don't want to have it here because you're going to be going around your head. This is called a halo. And a halo goes up and around your head. Okay, so in front of your face. Now, the direction that you want to go, you tilt one end of the dumbbell up there. So, if I want to go this way, I tilt this end of the dumbbell this way. 
so that I can go around the head and then bring it down. Tilt up. So if you wanted to, yeah, if you wanted to go this way, but you tilt this one up. If you try to go around the head, you see how it's, it doesn't feel the same. So what you do, you start here, tilt it up. And so if you can, if you have one arm up here and one arm down here, the fingertips facing the opposite end of the room, that's the way that you go. And ending. Up. And ending. Tilt. All the way around. And end. Yes. Got to do it the other way. But I want to show you side of view. Doing the other way. Starting here. Tilt it up. And then go all the way around. Tilt it up. All the way around. Tilt it. Pivot. One more. It may take a few tries to get it. Keep watching the video. If you need to, slow it down. And in fact, I can actually show, show you a slow motion version. So I'll stay seated. Watch this. Here, tilt. Come around. Around. And end. Once more, round, around, around, and end. I'm going to go the other way. Tilt, around, around, working one shoulder one way, the other shoulder another way. Okay. This one, this hand, the bottom hand is holding that weight. The top hand is guiding it. And at the end, the bottom hand is holding it, but it used to be the top hand. So, yeah. So if you needed the slow motion, it's at the end of there. <clears throat> You're welcome to either fast forward to the end of that exercise or just wait. Mute me and then <laughs> when I start to show the uh, uh, slow motion version, then you can do that. Windmills. Now I'm going to hold on to the five pounds to do the windmills. Let me double check, make sure the camera is set up good. All right. I'm going to scoot this. No, I think I'll leave it there. Okay. So with the windmills, one foot forward, the other foot at a 90 degree angle. So if you were to put them together, they would make acute angles. So what you do, the foot that is facing the room and that is forward, you put that dumbbell up at the shoulder. The opposite dumbbell is going to rest on that thigh, the same thigh. So you're going to hinge Take your hips, this end, this side of your hip is going to stick out that way. So the weight is going to be quite a bit in that standing leg. And this is the beginner version. Doing this, hinging over, and then squeezing through the abdominals, pulling up. Yes, the beginner version is mostly abdominals. However, to incorporate the shoulder, instead of having the dumbbell here, have it out here to the side. And it really focuses on that shoulder. And this is intermediate, pushing it up halfway, and then bringing it in. Pushing it up halfway, bringing it in. Advanced, push it all the way up, and rotate it as you get to the top. Push it up and rotate and bring it down. And of course you would need to do the other side. And the more advanced you get, the wider your stance can get also to widen the range of motion. Okay. All right.
it appears we may have time for at least one more exercise. Let's see what camera says. We do. Okay. We have time for, I think, three more exercises. All right. Double arm one mower. Now I will do this here. Front knee bent slightly. Palms are facing each other. <clears throat> Pull the elbows up in toward the waist. Good. And the second way that I'll show you how to do it. Foot on the step. Lay your torso on your leg. Now, I don't want you to just collapse forward. Hinge from your hips to lay the torso on there. And if it doesn't, because you can see mine is not 100%, it's okay. You want to make sure that this area here is relaxed. Mine is. Pull the elbows into the waist. And I'm not using super heavy weights right now because I'm more focused on teaching you than I am on trying to get heavier weights into this move. Seated lat row with a loop. Let me get a heavy loop. This is one of the Kathy Friedrich loops. I use them frequently. I use her DVDs frequently as well. So, what you do, and you can do this in this seated position or seated on the floor, and I'll show you both. So, same arm on the leg. The, you can see that the, it's the opposite arm that has the loop from it being looped in the foot. Hinging over from the hips. Pull. So it's working the back. And I'll show you how to do this on the floor. So if you feel more comfortable being on the floor and doing this exercise, the closer in, your foot is, the easier it is, the further out, the harder it is. I have my hand wrapped around underneath to give my low back some support. There we go. Now if you try both of them, you find that the seated exercise is more convenient, you can stick with that, it's okay. One final exercise on this, Superman's. Now, I am going to show you how to do them. I'm not going to use any additional weight and I'm going to be on my belly for this, on my stomach, let me make sure that Camera, all right. There we go. Okay. So, lift up, squeeze your glutes as you do this. It helps to lift the lower body without using the low back. Pushing myself up. Oh. It looks like I'm just about out of time. So, <clears throat> what I'll be doing on the next video is core focused exercise. If you enjoyed this one, this video, if 
you have not subscribed, go ahead and do it. If you enjoyed it and you have subscribed, click the like button. I'll try to put list the exercises in the description and links to my certifications, just in case. Bye.